Hey there, I'm on the road right now visiting family, but you know what? The show must go on. So here is video number 100. Woohoo! Super big thank you to Ed for meeting up with me. Also super big thanks goes out to Array Labs for sponsoring this series. There is no way I would have been able to do this whole Phoenix San Francisco trip thing without them. And super big thanks to you for watching. Whether you've been here since the beginning or if you found me more recently, I really, really appreciate you guys. So thanks so much for watching. And let's keep going. Hey everyone, welcome back to JJ Rick's Rise with Waymo. We have a very, very special guest, Ed Niedermeyer. Hey. That's right, I've got two out of three for a ton of cast hosts on this <laughs> trip. Uh, <laughs> very special guest, uh, Ed Niedermeyer, automotive uh, journalist extraordinaire and author of... Uh, Oh gosh, it flew right out of my head. <laughs> oh, ludicrous. That is amazing. Ludicrous, unvarnished <laughs> story of Tesla Motors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for making time. This is so cool uh, to finally hang out together, and <laughs> where better place than the back seat of a driverless Waymo? Honestly, yeah, because you go you go way back with less cars. All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, You're I've been covering general. cars since like 2008. Yeah. Um, and, um, had my first Waymo ride in like 2016. 16. Yeah. In wow. fact, it was it was right. It was like a month before the the Waymo name. So technically, I've been riding Waymos before they were before they were Waymo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was that um was that even before the Pacifica era? Or it was. was it, it was, was a Lexus RX. Wow. Yeah. I don't know which generation of hardware suite that was, but yeah. it was definitely it was back when um like there was. It was before the Pacifica was the first time that they had anything that seemed like customer facing, like potentially yeah. customer facing. All testing. Back then, it was just yeah, it was it was the display was a laptop. Oh wow! Or I think I think there was a screen. There may have been a screen in there, but there was almost always an engineer with a laptop, and it was really cool because back then you could see the completely raw data feeds from all the sensors and. Uh, and whereas now it's, I mean, you still see it's yeah. so cool to see everything that the car's doing, but like they clean it up a lot now. It's very uh, not as, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do wish there was a nerd mode, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just happy this is here. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is that is quite cool. I remember seeing uh, like a Lexus with fourth gen test hardware on it in in 2016. Yep. It was just doing laps around my neighborhood. Was, that was the first time I was like. What was that thing? <laughs> you know? And what was so really, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was funny back then too because everyone thought this technology was like, like, like weeks away or months away yeah. or, or at most a year or two away. And in 2016, it was impressive, but like, the progress riding a fully driverless Waymo around San Francisco today from from you know that first ride was in it was just out of the Google X building in Mountain View, right? Which is like a totally different environment. It's much more like Phoenix. Yeah, uh, bigger streets, much less traffic, no pedestrians, and and it was really like, it was not not good. You know what I mean? I mean it was good. It was really impressive, but like it was slow. It would not be able to hack it in San Francisco just in terms of like how conservatively it drove. Yeah. If you took that system in San Francisco, like it, it wouldn't move. Yeah. And and the progress from 2016 to like 2019 when I did that same route, mm -hmm. even then you really got like that progress in like the naturalistic driving process. But what was funny was between 2016 and 2019, people went from thinking it was around the corner to like, oh God, this is, this, <laughs> it was when people started being like, oh, it's never going to happen. And like the technology gets better and better and yet people somehow get more and more skeptical. And it's like, you got to ride in these things. You got to yeah. see it for yourself. Coming off the hype crash there. Yeah. Like, Oh goodness, yeah. I, 2019 was right about when I December 2018 is when I finally actually realized what Waymo was, and then I you know I tried tried to get into the the early rider stuff. Uh, so like mid 2019 was the first time I ever I ever rode. So but yeah. you're still so, really early. So it's still yeah, um, it was still like very early uh, Chandler service. Yeah. But but yeah, they've even it feels glacially slow, but. If you look back on a year time scale, it's crazy how far we've come in just those just those few years. And this is so, your first time riding in San Francisco. In San Francisco today. And yeah. like this is pretty different than Phoenix, right? <laughs> yeah, very, very much so. Um, like the second I stepped out of the BART station on 60th of Mission, oh. I was like, what? What is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was great. And it's a, you know, I think to really appreciate like how amazing this technology is, you almost have to drive in the city yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure looking around, like 
you can tell driving here is not the same as, no. as driving in a lot of places. Really? Yeah. Because I've been coming here since I was pretty young, and I mean, I used to live in, in the Bay Area, but um, but like, as a driver, I've always thought of San Francisco as being one of the hardest places to drive, or mm -hmm. at least the most stressful. And the fact that we can now just sit here and just get whisked around. Yeah. Like, futuristic. It's incredible. Do you think that if you can crack San Francisco, you can crack anywhere, or...? Uh, I certainly yeah yeah I mean it, it's not as simple like see I think everyone's waiting for this technology to scale the way cars do mm -hmm. you know because cars are ubiquitous right like there's millions of Toyota Camrys and, and all that and and it's not as simple as if you can do San Francisco then all of a sudden it's going to be everywhere all at once mm -hmm. it's still where you have to adapt place to place and you have to you know every level four AV has to really understand its its domain and that just takes time mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, if you can succeed here, you can you can succeed anywhere, I think is the way to think about it, right? That is exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's like that song, New York, New York, right? Like, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. It doesn't mean it's guaranteed, like, it's going to happen overnight everywhere else, but um, but this is one of the hardest things to do. And, and, you know, you look at everything from, you know, debris that, like, maybe will float around, you know, paper Seriously. and things like yeah. that. People running around, the variety of vehicles, so, like scooters and e-bikes and bicycles and motorcycles yeah we had uh, two people on one wheels coming down the hill one wheels on the way to uh, on, on the way to lunch and it was just not having it you have other was, autonomous uh, vehicles yeah. oh yeah <laughs> and and actually so i took uh, my grandma on a ride and, and we went to lunch and and when we uh picked we got picked up at the same spot there was like a it was right in front of like a like a brewery and people were having some beers and there was like a barrier between them and the car but they all thought it was really funny to do the whole like oh what if i like you know like kind of can i freak out the car um by oh emergency wow. vehicle yep yeah yep wow so, yeah. so that was the other anyway that <laughs> and the, the poor car was just trying to like stop you know and yeah. they kept kind of doing this thing and um and and stuff like that like you know, that's a really interesting thing is as people get used to the cars, are they going to start doing like, mm -hmm. you know, adversarial type of behavior? Hopefully people get bored with that stuff. Hopefully, yeah, because uh, first ride this morning, we had a guy just stand in front of the car for a whole light cycle, just like, you know, yeah. kind of juking it out. And that, that was people honking in the back and I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> well, <laughs> so people are... <laughs> so we just said, whoa, right? Because yeah. we just saw it. And, and I didn't even see it. The car saw it well before I saw it. Yeah, me too. So the car slowed down. It wasn't clear why. And it's funny how, how sometimes you'll think like the car's screwing up. Uh -huh. And then you're like, oh, no, no, no. It just sees something I can't. And it was an like, emergency vehicle yep. that we're going past right now because it's pulled over. But the, the yeah. emergency vehicle did a U-turn right in front of us like a half a block ahead. Yeah, yeah. And it slowed down and got over before I even saw it. And And... One of the rides I did earlier today. Yeah. Um. I also I could hear it and couldn't see it, and and um, our Waymo got over. It did a better job of getting over for it than than any of the other human drivers. So I know that's been like one of the complaints. I know cruises have a harder time than Waymo, but just from my personal experience on a couple rides here, they're really on top of the emergency vehicles. I love in Phoenix when it can tell the difference between a current construction crew with flashing lights and an emergency vehicle. Yeah. And even I thought that was some kind of other like utility vehicle because ambulances don't look like that in Phoenix. Right. So it, yeah, like that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, is that really an ambulance? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, just now it was saying yielding to emergency vehicles because I think it was behind us yep. still parked, but, uh, it's, it just, once it figured out it wasn't moving, I guess it kept going. So yeah. Was, uh, yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure in the, in the one that, that happened earlier today, if, um, cause I think they, they've been using microphones, haven't they? For the last couple of hardware yeah, generations. I think like eight microphones. Yeah. Array kind of stuff. Cause it yeah. seemed like it could hear it before mm -hmm. it could see it. Um, yeah, which is quite cool. Yeah, they, there's been um, a couple times when it's just an ambulance parked at a stoplight and it'll still draw the border around it. Oh, it's yep. like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know what car that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, crazy impressive. Yeah, that's the uh, and as, as you were saying with the scaling though, the what's interesting to me is how much how complex of a logistical operation it is 
ride hailing itself rather yep. than just the driving too. It's like you actually have to have this figured out from every level. Uh, yeah, it's... and especially with electric vehicles, mm. like the charging is a huge thing. And then, and I don't, you know, Waymo hasn't talked a lot publicly about it, but the, you know, I know all these sensors need calibration. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons that even for the idea of a super wealthy person owning one of these vehicles would be hard to do. Yeah. Because. You know, if Waymo operates the fleet, then they guarantee that those sensors are always in working condition and they're always well, you know. But like, if it's a private vehicle, sometimes, you know, people yeah. forget to change our tires and things, you know what I mean? They don't stay on top of it. Yeah. And this is totally different. Right. Um, so yeah, you need like that that operational support of, uh, of that, you know, charging and maintenance with, and, and the cleaning. Yeah, my, I f my favorite episode of the Atomic Cast is when Craft Chick came on at, was it CES? Yeah. Something. Yep. Uh, and he was talking about personal ownership, leasing, rentals, something. And yep. I got excited when he was talking about that. He said he said he was, yeah, they were thinking about it. They were exploring it's it. It's like. I but like, I think he yeah. mentioned, I think he mentioned uh, uh, sensor calibration then too. Yeah. I yeah. think that was one of the first times and one of the only times actually that anybody at Waymo has talked much about about the personal, the possibility of personal ownership. And yeah, yeah, he said, he said it would have to be a lease. Right. Because, you know, the, that way they can guarantee, I think that they would be able to guarantee that the maintenance gets done. Right. But he mentioned, I thought it was really cool that he was upfront about that, because I hadn't thought about that, that sensor calibration issue, so. Yeah, I, um, I miss Craft Chick. Yeah, he's <laughs> he, a was, fun guy. he was on Twitter actually replying to me all the time, like, oh, and yeah. answering random questions and stuff. So that's, uh, yeah, that was a good time, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's, it's just amazing, I mean, because, he was there before he got there before they before the Waymo name I think right yeah. right around that time, um, and uh, again just just the progress that's been made since then is just yeah incredible yeah oh my goodness I feel like I feel like the, I don't know my my theory is that the last big barrier is the highways freeways kind of thing and then once you kind of because Phoenix if you want to go across Phoenix you need to use the freeway like, yep. Like, yeah, you got it. So there's only so far you can expand before it starts to get like, <laughs> So it, yeah. that's a really interesting. I wonder. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting evolution because in the early days of people thinking about robo taxis, there were a lot of, a, the assumption was that they would all be kind of in urban areas. Yeah. And so like the Zooks was like one of the first, you know, custom designed robo taxis. And it's like really optimized uh, for, for that, right? Yeah. Like for 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 dense urban kind of areas, turns out that is where you know it, it makes a certain amount of sense. But to make money in any taxi business, mm. you got to go to the airport. Yep. And so yep. a lot of airports, you got to drive on the highway. So yeah. I did see, and so actually, um, uh, you know, like the an I pace would be better for that than. You know, and it's actually one of the, I, apparently like the cruise origin has been modified since they showed a prototype and it was like really tall and boxed. I guess it's been brought yeah. down lower. And I think people ah. speculate that that part of that may be because they realize you got to go on the, the freeway. They also added, yeah. I think uh, more of a trunk area for or luggage storage in the, in the kind of updated production version. Ah. And so I think the, the, it was interesting that the cruise origin kind of from the prototype that they showed to now the one they're starting to use in Texas. Yeah. They're, they're kind of, it's that airport, that airport job. Cool. Yeah. I, I think I heard at some point that the I-PACES were doing Phoenix Sky Harbor actual terminal. Oh, really? Operations with employees only. I don't know if I misremember, if I misremembering that, but the, the, the SkyTrain station is still pretty cool in its own right. Because mm -hmm. you will just stand there and you see Waymo's coming all the time. People getting in, coming out, it's like people are using this. Well, like, this is a thing. <laughs> and I'll say, I will say, I don't know if it means anything, but I did coming into town uh, today to start writing. I saw an I-PACE going the other way on 101, oh. which is how you would get the SFO. So oh. I, I don't know anything. I have yeah. no inside information. All right. But, uh, you know, I, yeah. again, like I think, I think everyone in the business at this point realizes that that has to be part of, you know, your your sort of operational model. Yeah, they are crawling highways in Phoenix. Like mm -hmm. if you drive around at all, you'll you'll see them eventually. Yeah. Uh, and so it's I always try and pick up if it's in manual or not because the cruises will, cruises will come off the highway too. Mm -hmm. uh, but they seem like they're all mostly in manual for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can never quite tell with the eye paces because you know the driver is doing the the hand hover right. thing. But yeah. 
Yeah, but it's it's a thing. It's it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm excited having gotten to sit in the uh, in the ne in the next generation Waymo vehicle. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. The Zeker Robo Taxi. Yeah. That I'm. I, I mean, today, riding in the in the I Pace, I just all I could think about. I mean, it was amazing. I was taking it in, but all I could think about was like, this will be so cool in that Zeker Robo Taxi. Yeah. And and a big part of it is because. You know, I mean, this is designed to be, you know, the kind of car people buy, so it's all sleek and it looks great, but like, you know, these windows are all like tiny and there's not uh -huh. a lot of glass and like, especially if you're new to a city and you really want to take it in, it's, it's unfortunate. Also the sunroof has got all the sensors on top, you know, the glass, the moonroof. Yeah. Um, whereas <laughs> when you sit in that Zeker, um, and I haven't been in the, on the road obviously, but right. just sitting in it, um, uh, it like, there's this huge like windshield. Right. And so the forward visibility is absolutely incredible, and um, I think that's going to be a really interesting experience. Yeah, especially for passengers. I did notice going from Pacifica to I-Pace, the windows being smaller, and it's the the tinted uh, the tint on the windows is a lot more dramatic mm -hmm. as well. Uh, even with the front window, it's kind of like a meta thing. The when the, these windows seem to be more tinted than the windshield, only mm. perceptible to the camera. So like in the shot, the front is overexposed and the sides are oh, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm, I am very interested to start seeing those those Zekers running around at, at some point here. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is exciting. Th those, uh, was that also at CES? Or, uh, that was, wait, at the, was at the auto show, at auto the, show. the LA, okay. LA auto show LA uh, auto last show. Like October, or November, or something like that. Wow, it's been that long. Yep. Goodness. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a really cool vehicle, and it, it's interesting because it is it's it's you know more of a it's a boxy, spacious van type of thing, but it's definitely unlike the the cruise and the Zooks, which are kind of like you know could kind of go either direction sort of a thing. It mm. definitely has it's directional. That's a front. It's aerodynamic. Yeah. It has a trunk in the back, um, and it's like it's like a little bit more conservative in mm. some ways, or like a regular car, let's put it. Yeah. Uh, than some of the other robo taxi designs. But when you think about things like those taxi trips that need to go on the highway, you can be more aerodynamic. Right. You can have more of a trunk. Yeah. It actually makes sense. And 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 what Waymo said. So so Zeker apparently will make sort of a version of that for other customers if they want. Oh. And so in some of the prototypes they've shown, they can make it with like that club seating or whatever you call that, where the seats face each other. Yeah, like a train. And when uh, was like, yeah, we just don't, we just don't feel like we want that. <laughs> they think people want to be facing forward. I think they may have a point. I agree with them. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny that when you see a new EV come out and people are talking about, oh, like the coefficient of air friction resistance, yeah. whatever, it's like, it's always this low decimal mm -hmm. and people are like, we had to flatten the door handles and get all the extra. And then these like EV prototypes come out of Zooks and Cruise and they're like big box. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, uh, is that very aerodynamic? I don't know. Uh, I'm, no, I'm no physics guy, but. <laughs> yeah, but I think, <laughs> you know, it, what's interesting about it is that, you know, people, we just haven't figured out until you get people on the road and using it, like you can imagine, yeah. but I, I know like, you know, each time, especially you do driverless, you do it in a new city, you know, like there's these things that you don't expect. And, yeah. and so, yeah, like I think there's going to be a learning curve and, you know, uh, Maybe in certain use cases at low speeds and just around town, maybe like the club seating would be cool. And if, if you know you're gonna be in the car with like, it's only gonna just be vehicles, uh, pe people in the vehicle that like you know, you're not sharing it with strangers. Yeah. Um, Cause people are talking about that sharing like carpool stuff and that does sound interesting, but I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. Part of the fun of being in an AV is like, I can just yell and sing <laughs> and whatever, you know, and no, nobody cares, but I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I think if you do share, you want to, I mean, there's, it's, I feel like it'd be easier to share if everyone's just sort of facing the same direction yeah. and it's not yeah. like it, the, the seating that faces each other kind of creates this like social expectation, which like, I feel like, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, you know, coming home from the bar Almost with a bunch of your friends, that might be really fun. Morning. Right. But like going to the airport in the morning, you know, you just want like a shuttle bus experience, right? You just want to get in, you know, <laughs> everyone's looking the same direction. And like everyone doesn't have to like, you know, awkwardly stare at each other. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but see, that's the thing is maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe people will love it. So maybe, uh, you yeah. know, 
I don't know. You just gotta see. I mean, yeah. All kinds of potential for weird stuff with AV. Uh, I know. I know people have been pitching all kinds of crazy ideas and yeah. what kind of vehicle stuff you could do, but. Yeah. yeah. No, and like uh, even like uh, was it just uh, the other night I was in here I was uh, in in staying in the city for a night because um, I was at this conference I was I was walking home it was dark and I crossed the street actually it was right in this it was right in Chinatown here too yeah and I crossed the street and right there is a Waymo I pace you know driverless and I realized this is the first time I've like walked in front of a fully driverless vehicle. Yeah. Which is like a different thing than than the first time riding. And you know, it's a Waymo, so like I've you know, I've been riding them forever. I know the company pretty well. Like mm -hmm. I built up a lot of trust with them. But like somewhere deep down there was still like a moment of just like the, the willies. Huh. You know what I mean? And I didn't expect it at all, and it passed quickly. Yeah. Because again, my rationally I'm like, there's I I'm you know, I trust these people. I've already put my hands in the life <laughs> of their technology multiple times. Like, you know, uh, but there's something about stepping in front of one that for me, whatever, it just kind of triggered a thing. So, so I'm always like experiencing things like that, that I haven't experienced before. And, and like, and the reaction's a little bit different and, and oftentimes there is something that I didn't expect. And so it's both, it's, it's like the coolest thing about this thing is that we're doing something You're new. You're here. Yeah. Please make that sure is, it's clear I, before exiting. Let's see. I'm going to keep going here. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's, oh man, I feel like there's this disconnect between the actual capabilities of the AV and people's expectations and thoughts, especially in San Francisco. Yep. Um, and I, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I, but it's been, if I did have that feeling, I think it's been a long time. Yeah. For me, because I've been in, around these enough that I can be like, I know with a hundred percent certainty if I get anywhere close yep. to touching this thing, it's going to stop. Yep. So I, I just feel like more people need to experience these and get a look at that rider screen that shows you how much you can see and what it's reacting to and what yep. it's going to do next. If, and I feel like there have more, there'd be more public trusts. Yeah. Um, but you're right. But, it's 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 because you're exposed to it on a daily basis, and so you yeah. see lots of different things happen and and you do it's not like i think there's sometimes the the you know people want to believe like oh well if you just give people one ride that that does the trick yeah and like it does help we like definitely helps uh people sure. overcome some of that that irrational fear let's call it mm. um but like i said there's 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 a process of just getting used to new things and you're way ahead of the curve on it because you <laughs> happen to live in a place where it's like the most, it's, it's, it's more common than anywhere in the world for, very the last, available. for the last yeah. however many years. Mm -hmm. And San Francisco is just at that, the earliest part of that. And some of it will just be time and exposure, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is funny the way people are reacting to it and the, cause it, that's so foreign to someone used to Phoenix. Like mm -hmm. these just showed up and people were like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and some of it's down to like Phoenix is way better for if you care about the efficiency of cars and mm -hmm. whatever, then, you know. But uh, yeah, not as many pedestrians, roads are way wider. And, you know, being a, a, a city made for cars, of course, is going to be easier for, for that. But yep. um, yeah, I just you know, I just haven't seen that reaction before. It's always either like bemusement or total apathy. Yeah. Honestly. So, so yeah, and the, the, the funny thing here, the kind of rock star thing that happens here in San Francisco, because San Francisco is such a big like tech town yeah but like when when we went to that restaurant and i got out with my grandma or whatever I and mean, there were people with, it was like the, i felt like the paparazzi or something like that yeah like, uh and then also when we got dropped off like it's people are like and i think a lot of times it's tourists who are already kind of like wide-eyed at the big city you know what i mean like here yeah. in san francisco and like you know they know it's sort of the cat you know tech capital and stuff but then they see this car like people get out of this car and there's like they're like wait there's nobody in that and we're like nope yeah is uh, that safe yeah. is that yeah, t tons of. I mean, there's people like that in Phoenix too, but sure. not nearly as many. Yeah, yeah, today has been crazy for people like taking pictures and videos and. Yep. Yeah. You know, always fun to roll down the window and give a little wave. You know, it's like, and people are surprised, like, oh, you're in the, in the back of the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they seem to all yeah. be driverless. I haven't seen a single I pace around with someone in the front seat. Yeah. I mean, maybe the one on the highway was. I'm thinking. Maybe. But, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. That's um, a good point. I wouldn't have known but, if we were. Yeah, it, it's pre it's pretty quick. It's hard to tell, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it has been. I, I've also seen a huge decrease in yeah uh, operated uh, 
people with people in the front uh, in Phoenix, Phoenix as, yeah. as well. Yep. Um, I feel like they've been spread more thin by the size of the surface area. Mm. Uh, oh, we're gonna do it. Ah, oh, cool. Hello. Um, but yeah, so okay, because it used to be in Chandler when they were actually you know testing a lot. It right. would be you'd see them absolutely everywhere, and then yeah, the surface area is a little bit bigger, so they're they're more few and far between. Yep. Um. But the way people were describing San Francisco, I was expecting to see tons of AVs when I stepped out of the station, and it hasn't really been like that. So, so but, I was here yeah. a couple of years ago. Was it? No, it was just about a year ago, actually. And there were a lot more then. There was like. So it's oh, actually okay. come down. Yeah. So one of them, I think, is Cruise is only operating at night now. Oh, and 50% capacity as well. Oh, are they as well? C is it, was it CPUC that did that? Or so somebody um, made them... Well, they're under NIT's capacity. investigation right now. Oh, too. okay. I did see one, but I've only seen one cruise since we've been here because I haven't really been out yeah. much at night in the city. I haven't even seen any. I saw, <laughs> I've seen a Zooks. And then the other day, um, out by, uh, kind of between San Mateo and, and Half Moon Bay, I saw an Apple. Oh, and then and then actually the big mattress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got such a distinctive hardware uh, uh, pod on top of their roofs. And then today I saw one in the city when we were waiting for our first Waymo. Um, that was a Prius with a round sensor suite. That I didn't recognize. Huh. I think it might be a Neuro, but I didn't think Could Neuro was doing anything here. I think they're only doing stuff in Palo Alto. So yeah, um, mystery. So I gotta I gotta yeah. figure out. I don't know. Yeah, I saw. I've seen a couple of mystery things today. I, uh, I got some pictures, huh. uh, but we yeah, we also saw Zooks kind of by the Zooks building. Yeah, they kind of tend um, to be down there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I was I was with uh, Kevin Chen earlier. Same with but, and with cruises. Yeah. You used to especially if you go anywhere near. Um, they're sort of over kind of that Soma area. Yeah. If you go anywhere near, they got a big headquarters building, and if you go anywhere near there, you would just see all those little white cruises like <laughs> running around constantly. Yeah, it is it is cool to see them in in Phoenix as they've as they've actually you know, expanded their service area in Phoenix now as well. Oh, cause you can pretty you can, ubiquitous now. You can call it more Phoenix than just Chandler. Okay. Um, it was a pretty big expansion. I've, I mean, I've only seen a couple of them. Uh, yeah, again, they're not really daytime. But, yeah. Uh, I'm actually planning to try cruise in Phoenix tonight if I can. Oh, cool. Uh, wow. But <laughs> Waymo, yeah. Waymo by day, cruise by cruise night. By night yeah. Yeah. Different. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't make it work uh, yesterday because I had to go to bed early so I could wake up at the crack of dawn and get to the airport by five something. But yeah, different but, yeah. different AV companies in different cities <laughs> on the same day. You are yeah. uh, uh, we'll uh, see. next level, Joel. <laughs> I was I was filming in Phoenix all of yesterday too. So wow. It was a uh, yeah. This is a big trip. Yeah. Um, and try and fit it, squeeze it on to the weekend. Yep. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's funny, my, my grandma's uh, almost 97 years old, and she, the, I asked her that, you know, I've, I've been hanging out with her while I've been in town, I've been doing a bunch of other, uh, like, reporting stuff, and... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've kind of been here all week, and, and I had this conference and stuff, too, and I've been hanging out with her, and, and I was like, you know, do you want to ride in a, a self-driving car? Um, and I've like I've, I've actually talked with her a bit about it, and um, it's a fun challenge to try and explain it. Yeah, you know, to her, and she she definitely wasn't sure. If she was like, I don't know, and I was like, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Like you know, definitely you don't have to, but um, you know, I've ridden them in in them a bunch, and I've done it for years, and I definitely would not like you know suggest my grandma do anything. It feels that's, unsafe. That's unsafe. Yeah, you know? and she's like, okay. She's like, stop. No, you sold me. I'll do, it. I'll do it. And she had the best time. She, I'll tell you, like, and it was so cool because she was like telling us, you know, I was, it was me and my mom and, and, and my partner. And like, my grandma was, you know, as we were riding through these Almost parts of San Francisco, dead. she was telling us what it was like 60 years ago. And, you know, uh, like, yeah. it was just such a cool experience. Yeah. I tend to find that my family members get bored of Waymo very quickly. Yeah. Like within five minutes, kind of quickly. So, yeah. It's like people are like, wait, hey, we should go do that. You know, yeah. we should go try it out. And then it's like, can we go home now? Like, that's, you know, that's kind of exactly what you want, honestly, for for like a taxi service, I guess, but a hundred percent. If I, it surprises me because I'm still not over this yet. Well, and I think driverless <laughs> in San Francisco is like a different animal. That is true as well. Yeah. yeah. In Phoenix, you just go in a straight line. Right. Or and go in a straight line. Yep. So. Whereas this, you got all these ups and downs and yeah, streets. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Oh, 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 go, 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 go. <gasps> Don't get me out. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little late on the draw there. That was uh. Because you can do up to five stops. 
Yeah, I've used up my five, but now I'm just changing the same one over and over again. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. This hill climbing is Isn't it wild? so impressive. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Well, do you, so do you think it'll, like, are you just gonna, like, do it as long as you can until they kick you out? Uh, yeah, I might just get a different car at some point, but I don't really want to get out with my camera equipment if I don't have to. Oh, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. But, but honestly, yeah. the amount of power these things draw, it will eventually probably get yeah, out. Yeah, this one only has, this one has 61 miles on it, so, yeah, it should be, uh, Is that miles or, is that's the temperature? I thought that was uh, miles, too, at 61 yeah, Fahrenheit. Yeah, it, it has, like, a little gas icon. Oh, does it? 61. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, um... Oh, yeah, it's getting low. Yeah, I, I had a whole bunch of eye paces in Phoenix yesterday. They were all below 40, and they kept kicking me out. Okay. Well, I <laughs> so mean, was, uh, you know, somewhere up funny. here yeah. would be a good place. I mean, obviously, sure. you have to pull it off and set it up, but, like, yeah. obviously, down where Andrea was, <laughs> like, yeah. by mo like, that would be a less great place. Yeah, um, where, wherever you want to end up, uh, that's fine with me. So. Yeah, so I, I will need to get back there um, sure. eventually, so. Yeah, I don't want to kidnap you, exactly. But yeah, yeah. But, the... but, I mean, if you want to, like, <laughs> get out and get another car. and Yeah, I way. will, totally. Okay. Yeah. Because we, we can do that and then go down there or whatever sure. you want. Yeah, we're, yep. where were you thinking here? Um, uh, I mean, honestly, uh, that if you're just going up to that spot, yeah, let's just get out there and we'll get sure. another car and then, yeah. and then, like I said, if you want to ride around some more, we can do that. Um, Andrea's <laughs> super into like the art, so. Oh, cool, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I will keep you, but yeah, that is the third R1S I've seen today. Uh, usually in Phoenix, you'll see one maybe once a month. Yep. So. Yeah. I was, uh, I was expecting more AVs for it being San, or EVs rather, for yeah. San Francisco, but. Uh, I've seen a lot of Rivians around. I haven't seen yeah. any Lucids. That's, I, I was expecting to see more Lucids around here. I think I saw one in Phoenix yesterday. Um, uh, but the, the Rivians, yeah. and then also, especially the ones I've been noticing at night, um, or in the dark, is uh, the Mercedes EQS. Oh. So that's some, like fancy that's lights. Yeah, yeah, LED yeah. stuff on And at it. first I thought they were Lucids, because they kind of have that bar on the front, and I wasn't, and I just don't see that many Lucid, so I don't really recognize their uh, their headlight kind of signature yeah. at first sight, and I realized, no, I'm seeing EQSs. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, the cars here are <laughs> absurd, <laughs> yeah. It's mostly I recognize the Lucid Air by the back of it, honestly, mm -hmm. it's so flat. Yep. With the, yeah, the, somewhere I volunteered a while ago, the owner had a, Lucid Air Grand Touring, so Ooh. he would park in the front. And I would park next to him in a Honda Odyssey. <laughs> I'd take a picture of it. That's yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. yeah. That's a, oh my goodness. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't. I, oh wow. I wouldn't want to park on this. No, and, and I, even driving. I mean, driving on some of these roads is just like. Yeah. It's. Anyway. I, I, <laughs> I used to always hate Almost driving in San Francisco. Dead. I mean, don't I still don't love it. But. Yeah, I love the start-stop on hills with this thing. It's it like doesn't um, yeah. even roll back. Yep. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty it, sweet. Yeah, I've been noticing the the driving is they just they drive real crisp. Yeah. You know I mean, they really like, and you have to in a, in yeah. a city like this. Did you notice the step up in quality from Pacifica to I Pace in terms of driving yeah. behavior? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was it was huge. I mean, it's been um, a, it's there's been progression. There was the big step was there was the Pacifica was a huge step. That was the the yeah. night and day step. But there's definitely been a noticeable step from there to the I Pace for sure. It feels like a whole layer of polish has yeah. been put on, at least for me. And it also helps that the base vehicle is a lot nicer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. But the Pacificas were all rattly and stuff. I mean, I do miss them for their spaciousness, but... Uh... My mom was like, so how much of these eye paces? <laughs> she, was, she was eyeing it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try and find a better spot to not block traffic if I can. Because oh. uh, I am... I have to get all of my crap out of this car. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Do you need a hand with anything, or...? Oh, uh, I think it should be okay. Uh, we'll see here. Uh, actually, this street seems yeah, this kind is of actually as good a place, This is as good a place as any. Yeah. There's okay. someone, like, people are double parking anyway. We'll call it here. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us for yet another episode. Uh, thank you for joining me, Ed. It's been a pleasure. I've been listening for years, reading for years, so huge. It's huge. Yeah, this so. has been so much fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Love love writing sure, here, and so much fun. great, uh, <laughs> so great to, to hang out with you uh, in a fully driverless way. Well. Cool. Awesome. All right, see you guys. All right, call that good.